Hi, my name is Henry Castro. I am from Bolivia, located in South America. I'm going to talk about running macros using the macro selector dialog, which is a feature added to the Colabora online. First, we are going to analyze how does Visual Basic for applications scripts runs in the LibreOffice core. Then I'm going to explain how was the macro selector dialog implemented in the client side using JavaScript code. In order to run a macro, the user should trigger a unit command called run macro. This command is triggered clicking on the tools options run macro submenu item. Then the dispatch framework will process the command, which it will invoke to show a macro selector dialog, and the user will select the preferred macro to run. And finally, it will invoke the main function to run a script called call script. You can read the source code when the dispatcher execute the unit command. Here is the location where you can analyze the code. Also, you can read the source code, the creation of the script selector dialog, and invoke to run the dialog synchronous. A macro selector is shown and the user will select the preferred macro to run. Once the item is selected, the user will click the run button to execute it. Finally, when the when the user clicks on the run button and the dialog is closed, the call script is invoked. This is the entry function, which is the script engine that will process the macro. This is a big picture to process a macro. The unit command is invoked, then a uh, macro selector dialog is shown. Once the user click the selected macro, the script engine will run the macro. You can observe here the main input data is the script argument which is passed to the script engine to process the macro. We try to modify the diagram, but this time using the web application Collabora Online in a remote site. We just need to send the script argument to the LibreOffice core, LibreOffice kit here, throw a socket communication which it will route to the main screen function. Basically, this will be our design. On the client side, it's necessary to create an HTML macro selector dialog to be user-friendly to select a macro to run and then send it through the socket communication to
to the LibreOffice Kit server. But how was the macro selector dialog implemented in the client side? Here we have the options. First one is creating a static HTML dialogs because the dialog it looks not complicated. The second option will be using a tunnel in the dialogs which is sending images to the client side, render it on the server side. And finally, the three options could be create an HTML dialog dynamically using the JavaScript code. These options were deprecated in favor of a generic HTML dialog generator. I'm going to explain the basic building related to an HTML macro selector dialog. My coworker Shimon Klaus will explain a detailed version of this dynamic JavaScript dialogs. You can observe the constructor of the script selector dialog. It does not change anything in the LibreOffice Kit process. The difference, it has added a generic dialog function to collect the JSON property tree data. Let's say, instead to show the dialog or to render that dialog, it will send the JSON data as a property tree. Here you can insert examples of properties like title, collapse, and an ID. If we grab the diagram, we will see that the LibreOffice Kit core process will create that microselector dialog instance. And it will invoke the show, but instant to render this, it will send that JSON data, the property tree, through this WebSocket communication. The web application called our online will receive that JSON data and will use a generic JavaScript builder to create an HTML macro selector dialog. The function that received the JSON data is called on GS dialog, as you can read in the source code. And finally, the builder is called to output the HTML macro selector dialog. The result will be a styled CSS dialog. Thanks to my coworker Pedro Pinto Silva for the styling. There were some problems with the generic builder. You click to expand the item, then all the dialog is created again. For every user interaction, the dialog is created again. It was not acceptable to repeat the macro selector dialog after expand or select, select an item. I had to improve by adding the partial update of the control. This is similar on the server side when the control internal data is dirty or invalidated. And finally, I will show you some code pointers where could be more where could be more improves. The function is called on GA's update. It will only update the data of the control. In case of the macro selector dialog, the tree view control 
requires updates to do user interactions like to expand or to select items. And if you read the code, the DOM element is removed and created again. A new one just update the control that belongs to a dialog. This can be improved traversing the tree data structure and for each node just update the inner text or value. Let's summarize all the process again. The web application Collabora Online will send the Uno command run macro through a web socket communication channel. This, mac this command is triggered by clicking in the tools macro room macro suit menu items. The LibreOffice Keep process receives the Uno command and using its dispatcher framework it will route the command to the corresponding function to process. The LibreOffice Keep process will create a logical macro selector DAO instant to show or render the dialog it sends a JSON property tree data through the web socket communication to the client side. The web application Collabor Online once it receives the dialog creation JSON data will create an HTML macro selector DAO. Once it's created both dialogs, the HTML and the shadow of logical macro selector, the client and server side, there is a user interaction communication. If the user clicks the HTML dialog, the click event is sent to the logical macro selector dialog which will respond if the control internal data is dirty or needs to be invalidated. It's respond with the JSON data to client side to update that partial data. When the user selects a preferred macro to run and click the run button, the click event is sent to the logical macro selector on the server side, which will close the dialog, sending back to close both dialogs, sending back to close the HTML and the logic dialogs. And as explained before, the leave of his core continue with this normal uh, flow process running the macro passing the script to the main engine to run the macro. That's it for me. Thank you very much.